And now, it's that time of the week once again. Welcome to the Departure Lounge Podcast with your hosts, Tom Whittle and Steve Waldridge. Your ticket to the home of aviation podcasts. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. Yes, hello everybody and welcome to episode 23 of the uh, Departure Lounge podcast uh, on the Departure Lounge YouTube channel and of course on Spotify if you are listening on there, a big hello to you. As you heard, my name is uh, Tom Whittle and joining me this evening is my co-host Steve Aldridge. Steve, a very good evening. How are you tonight? My bad, you might have to go through that again. <laughs> uh, uh, no worries. Yeah, good evening, Tom, um, and everyone who's watching on YouTube and catching up on Spotify as well. I'll um, I'll end up editing that out, so that's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, honestly. It feels like it's been a long uh, day. But, um, <clears throat> no, good evening to you. Um, and also joining us uh, over in the comments section and uh, having his say on uh, tonight's topics um, is Ian Hartley. Ian, good evening to you. Are you well? Yeah, very well, thanks, Tom. Good evening to you as well. Good evening to you as well, Steve. Um, yeah, all ready, ready to go. Excellent stuff. Uh, so before we kick into uh, tonight's episode, um, we have a few um, things to go over in terms of housekeeping, so we'll get those done now. Uh, as we mentioned, we are on Spotify, so if you want to check us out uh, and listen back to the previous episodes, you can um, on the move by clicking the link in the description below or searching for us on the Spotify app. Um, we're now also on Discord as well, so you can join the uh, many people that have uh, gone into the server for all chats and stuff uh, by clicking the link that will be in the description shortly. Um uh, also, we have our uh, social media, so Instagram and Twitter as well, so you can keep up to date on uh, the channel's uh, events and things that will be happening um, by following or uh, subscribing to that. Um, and of course, lastly, uh, if you wish to be a guest on the show uh, at any point, um, you can drop us a message on either of the socials and we will get you on. Um, as soon as we can. I believe that's everything for this evening. So whilst I quickly put the uh, Discord into the um, description, um, how's your week's been? Your week's been all right? Yeah, no, it's been, it's been really good. We've got a Bournemouth Fair show coming up starting Thursday so I'm really looking forward to getting down for at least one of those days so that's definitely something to be looking forward to sort of down our way next week and Ian what about you very tough how was your week all oh, right yeah my week's been out it just broke up a bit then yeah my week's been absolutely fine uh not really been up to much or um we had red arrows up here yesterday doing well they had no show over in Isle of Man but um they based themselves for the day down in Blackpool, well, up in Blackpool. Um, that's it. We've had a few bits and pieces flying about, and yeah, that's that's about it, really. It's been a quiet one. Bank holiday tomorrow, so happy days and uh, an extra day off for everyone. So that's good. Right, yeah, you, yeah. Mine's mine's been absolutely fine. Um, it, weather's been lovely, very very nice, and um, yeah, it's 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 been. It's been interesting. It's nice to have a bank holiday now, so I know that I'm not going to work tomorrow. <laughs> so it's quite, it's, it's quite yeah, nice to actually uh, get an extra day's weekend. So um, I'll take it. Oh, yeah, you say about the uh, red arrows in Blackpool. There, there's a, a photo circling on social media, and it's a uh, above shot of the red arrows breaking. And if you haven't had a chance to see it yet, it's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's an amazing picture. That yeah, it really, really is. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, so, in the chat is our Discord server. If you wish to join that, 
Um, you can press the link in the in the uh, in the chat right now. Um, but other than that, let's get on with the show. So we're going <coughs> to go and dive into sort of three news topics that have happened throughout the week, um, and uh, then we'll introduce our guest for this evening. So first of all, um, Steve, we're going to go with. Uh, the news of South African Airways confirming their return to the skies um, next month. So um, the airline has been toying and, and flirting with uh, sort of being uh, bankrupt and, um, you know, in administration for quite some time now. And they've been out of action for a year just purely because of the uh, the pandemic and that. But they have confirmed that in September... Um, it will uh, September twenty third. It will com- uh, it will resume flights, um, and booking for these flights will resume on the sixth of September. So, finally, some good news coming out of the uh, the aviation industry. Yeah, no, it is phenomenal that there's all these little uh, chink of lights starting to come after what everyone's been through during this time. I, I have seen that they're only going to be doing uh, sort of internal domestic flights at the moment, but like anything you've got to sort of start with baby steps of, if they are struggling rather than operating their entire route and not being able to cover the overheads with the travel not being exactly back to how it should be yet but it's a definite sort of uh green shoot of recovery for the industry that's for sure <clears throat> that's right so back in december 2019 the airline was placed into administration um and it almost looked like they were going to be no you know no longer around than that um it's one of those rare airlines that you see in the in the uk especially sort of at heathrow which is their only sort of uh uk airport that they go into and um it it, it was quite sort of you know sad to see that one of the, the you know the, the biggest airline in south africa um sort of in this sort of state but to find that they've climbed themselves out of it um and um, you know they've got a new airworthy um, operations certificate now, so um, they've streamlined their fleet completely to what will be just three A319s, two A320s, one A330-300, um, and two a 34600s So at least they're going to still be, um, you know, around and that, and they haven't followed suit by getting rid of them. Yeah, no, it's a good fleet of aircraft and when they can uh, sort of resume the further operations they've got they've got the uh, ability to be able to do it so definitely definitely um so yeah what, definitely great news to see no news as yet as to sort of the routes and stuff i imagine it'll be the same sort of route network as they had before um but in the long term um the fleet is to be bigger so they are basically going to sort of rebuild from the bottom up um and uh, they want to sort of add more A330s and bring back the A350s as well, uh, which were in the in the fleet for a, um, for, for a short time. So fingers crossed that now they've dug themselves out of that, they can um, sort of uh, you know keep themselves from um, going back into that sort of uh, precarious position. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I've just been reading here now that they're uh, they're not a, a government. Uh, like a state airline, they've only got a, a minority shareholder, them, which is obviously why they've sort of fallen on slightly harder times without any sort of bailout opportunity. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, so we'll move on from that, um, and we are going on to uh, Air Lingus UK. Um, so the UK division of Air Lingus that was set up to start transatlantic uh, services from manchester to the united states uh this has currently been delayed um until december um no sign really of so because of no sign of easing of the the travel restrictions between obviously uh, us and america um the airline has taken a decision to push back the the start date for flights to uh new york and orlando um until december so that's where they're sort of hoping that uh things will sort of start to ease off i mean we know why things are sort of uh you know the way that they are in terms of the 
restrictions of flying from the UK to the US. Um, do we see December as a sort of a realistic target for them, or do we think that might get pushed further back? Well, although it is obviously a, a setback for the airline, it's probably not the worst thing in the world, purely because they can see what JetBlue are doing and whether the numbers are, are working for them, uh, sort of how JetBlue are operating their their operations. And if if it's not going well, there's, they can always sort of back out of it until the uh, climate is a lot, lot better rather than taking a gamble with sort of third full, half full planes. Yeah. They can sort of take their time on it a little bit and just sit back and watch JetBlue sort of, uh, well, not make the mistake, but take the gamble on it. That's right. Yeah. So um, the services to New York and Orlando, I should say, um, if I had to put my teeth in, um, were due to start at the end of September. So they were to be the first two um, services uh, launched from from Manchester. Um, But now the first uh, route that will be done is um, Barbados. So Aer Lingus uh, will um, plan to launch October 20th, I believe, uh, flights to Barbados. So that'll be the first sort of route. Um, I just want to bring Ian onto this because obviously Manchester is his sort of nearest uh, you know, local big airport. Um, what are your sort of thoughts on this? I think, um, you know, the more traffic we can get into Manchester Airport, the better. Um I mean, flying. There's obviously a market there, isn't there? I think we've, we've, we've what happened to Virgin Atlantic and the seven four seven fleet and things like that. Operations haven't quite picked up, have they? So I just don't think the people aren't flying to these amber countries or whatever, these red countries and things like that. So I think they've just got to be a bit more picky and a bit more choosy about where they fly to and things like that, because there's no point in flying. Erling is flying a 330 to an ambulance country. They're not going to get the bums on seats, are they? You know, so I think they've just got to go where the market dictates, to be quite honest, at this particular moment in time. And I think uh, that's probably one of the reasons for them doing it, isn't it? It is, yeah. So mm. I, 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 would like, I would hope that it would be a, a realistic sort of uh, target for them to actually launch it in December um, and, you know, without sort of mentioning the word as to why it's sort of the rising sort of cases that's sort of putting it back a little bit so um whether december will happen or not or whether they'll sort of maybe push it to next year remains to be seen but at the moment that yeah. they are targeting um december um yeah for, they're, they're uh, probably for... trying to target the um winter holiday market I suppose aren't they trying to fly fly on the warmer places because i think in uh Around December time, you go to places like Barbados and what have you, and they're still like sweltering in sunshine, aren't they? Yeah. So um, obviously the likes of New York and that, a lot of people before you know pre uh, pre pandemic used to go over there to um, like Christmas shopping around Christmas time. Yeah, yeah. Um, which has always been on my bucket list, but never been able to fulfil it. Um, no. And um, Orlando, just I think because it's you know winter time, and I think you know a lot of people want a little bit more sun and warmer climate sort of thing so fingers crossed they can do that um yeah. but obviously barbados is going ahead so they will you know they will be launching in october so they will get it done this yeah. year really really yeah. good news can yeah, i just have to uh, add to it a little bit as well um this thursday as well like yesterday i saw the um i saw a 380 fly over the top of my house for the first time in a long time um and that was going from new york actually going back to dubai but um the 380 returns on Thursday, the 2nd of uh, September, back to Manchester Airport. So that's also good news. That's that's uh, a positive sign, isn't it? Definitely a positive. Um, I know Manchester Airport have made a big deal of this um, yeah. because they've put posts out saying that, you know, um, t- telling people to, while still be sensible, um, go down to the, 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 the viewing park or what's, what's left of yeah. the viewing park, rather, um, in order to see the, 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 the A380's return, which... Like you say, is is fantastic news for the um, for for the aircraft type. And Emirates were not going to be one of these ones that would just drop two hundred um, A three eighties or whatever it is they've got, um, just sort of like that. So um, yeah, it's good news that they're back. Um, 
But seeing as we're mentioning obviously the Emirates A380, we will have some. We've got some news on that, and the Emirates are dropping the A380 from three routes uh, from September. Um, so these uh, routes are um, Rome in Italy, Madrid in Spain, and Zurich um, in Switzerland. Um, and the, 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 the supposedly rumours are there is a fourth destination to be added to this. Um, which is supposed to be um, Tokyo as well. So Tokyo saw um, an A380 flight, but that was purely for the Olympic Games. So um, it it will not be a regular flight. They'll go back to I think it's obviously the triple seven and that. So, um, but the Rome, Madrid, and Zurich routes will now be flown by the triple seven, um, and yeah. Obviously, it's a tale of two, you know, two, it's a story of two halves, really. It's it's one that's, you know, the the the, the A380 is coming back to Manchester, which is fantastic news, as we know. And obviously now they're dropping them from three routes. Whether that's just because of demand or not, I don't know. But um, what what do we uh, what do we what do you think of this? Yeah, certainly the the, the yeah demand's got to come into play, and I imagine sort of the cost of fuel and everything that goes with it, it's just, it sort of makes more commercial sense to take a treble seven in, doesn't it? If it's, if it's uh, not going to be full up and sort of the cost of fuel, the cost of airport fees and that. Yeah. They've yeah. obviously had to make a business decision on it. Yeah. And they sort of studied the, the routes that are less, less popular you can get away with it with. Yeah. I imagine it will be because of, the fact that you know um just demand isn't there at the moment to fill them but you know, they were they are in places like you know they've, they've come back to heathrow um obviously as ian said you know he's seen them sort of coming from new york over his place to to back to dubai and stuff so they are you know there are they are being used um just obviously some places just don't have that sort of um I suppose demand really. I think that's the best way of putting it. It just ha- it's not just doesn't have that demand as of yet. Yeah, I think when you list the places that have been sort of dropped from it, they're not huge business destinations. Are they like New York, London? They're massive business destinations. Where obviously Madrid's a, a big city, but you don't really associate it with being a sort of a global sort of financial city compared to new york london that kind of thing mm. yeah no very true but um one to keep an eye on i think uh, in terms of um what's going to be what's going to be happening so um you know fingers crossed it's just a small drop and not sort of one that will take over sort of thing yeah well i think unfortunately the Sort of four engined uh, aircraft are probably going to be on the demise, aren't they, in the next five years, whether we like it or not? Yeah. With sort of three fifties and the like. Yeah, no, that's yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the sad point. About I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you about the three fifty. No, the the Qatar three hundred and fifty. Have there been any updates? Because um, they normally fly um, a Dreamliner into Manchester and they fl- through uh, a three thirteen, I think, today. Yeah, it was the treble seven when I looked on um, flight radar into Heathrow this morning. So they're still yeah. not they're nah. not from anywhere. Yeah, no uh, no updates as yet. I can't see uh, nah. can't see anything of any updates. So um, I imagine this is going to take some time for them to to figure it out. Yeah, it's going to be costly, isn't it? It's, we could definitely do about it at this point in time. That's for sure. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. But. Um, but yeah, so that that wraps up the news uh, for the week. Um, we've picked those three topics as we found them sort of to be the most uh, most interesting ones. Um, Ian, we'll pass it over to you with uh, the comment section. I would do, wouldn't you? Or just on something else then? Uh, <laughs> bear with me, sorry. I was I was actually reading updates on uh, the Qatar three hundred and fifty. Then, to be quite honest, um, lost me. I lost what we're up to now. Yeah. So the comments are. Um, so yep, yeah, there's good evening to Leo nine one one, and good evening as well to Jeremy Carlisle. Um, he's saying it's excellent news about the South African. Um, and then everyone's just saying hello to everyone, so everyone's uh, polite and happy and uh, 
in, in good moods, hopefully, tonight. Well, hello, everybody, as well. Yep. There's playing spotter 555. Five, five. He's saying hello to everyone as well. I didn't, I didn't see that comment right at the bottom there. So, yeah, good evening to everybody. Fantastic. Right, so let's uh, let's jump in then to uh, to, to bring on uh, this evening's um, guest and why we're why we're here this evening. So, uh, joining us tonight to talk about um, his ambitions of becoming um, a pilot and um, also uh, sort of aviation in the southwest of England as a whole um, is Jack Regan. Um, Jack, a very good evening to you. Uh, how are you? Well, good, thanks. Hello to all the viewers. Good. Stuff. Yeah, evening, Jack. How are you? You okay? Yep, yeah, good, thanks. Good, good. 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 So, uh, anybody that's got any questions for uh, Jack as we go through the evening, um, feel free to put them into the chat and we'll get them asked um, sort of as soon as we can. Um, but, Jack, we'll start off with um, sort of just a little introduction to yourself. If you want to tell everybody sort of what you're about and... Um, sort of how your love of aviation came about um so yeah so my name's jack i have a instagram account with about i think it's 1200 followers now with do a bit of aviation photography as a hobby um well how i got into aviation really i started you know gradually you know you started getting a bit like further and further more into it so when i was in like I think it was year seven, I gradually started to get more into it. And then when I got into year eight, I was on a TUI flight on the 737 to Heracleon in Crete. And um, I actually went and sat in the cockpit. And then that was a that was a big step forward to, uh, to um, you know, being in aviation. That, you know, that really gave me a big inspiration. And that's, that's probably what, what did it. And then I met... Um, someone online and they gave me a really good you know gave me a really good opportunity and taught me all about aviation photography and instagram of a aviation instagram and all like the other social medias and yeah it was really good fantastic uh, these, go on. <coughs> I, I was just going to say so you're um you're you're based down bristol aren't you is there is it just bristol you spot out or other airports well, at, at the moment, I've only really had the um, opportunity to go to Bristol. I was going to go over London Heathrow, which I, I'm going to start planning very, very soon, and probably in the next couple of weeks, I, I will be going there. But I've just, you know, been too busy. I, I'm afraid to uh, go to spotting at other airports. Last summer, I did actually spot at Kemble Airport with all the seven four sevens, which was which was really good. Oh, yeah, it's a bit sad, isn't it? I suppose it's sort of a, a graveyard, but it's also a, sort of um, a history of of how aviation used to be. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's an interesting place, Campbell. Um, if if anybody's actually been, they'll know exactly what I'm on about. But you, <clears throat> I've been there a couple of times, and the, the the way that you can get so close up to the aircraft as well that are sort of parked up and 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 sort of in storage at the moment. Um, is is quite incredible. So it, it makes for a really really good day out. Yeah, I've not been up myself. I've, I certainly wouldn't mind a uh, a trip up there at some point before they all sort of get like properly scrapped and sort of just a memory. That's for sure. Yeah, it's definitely worth doing. Like definitely worth doing. Um, you know, my my most viewed video on my channel is actually from from my first visit to Kemble. So. Um, you know, it, it serves good purpose um, <laughs> to, uh, uh, to sort yeah. of go there, really. But um, yeah, some some of the things you see are, are quite um, quite amazing, really. To to kind of uh, you know, for, for us that spot and you know film planes and take pictures of them and things like that, for us to kind of go from seeing one that's in service and one that is um, you know you see it flying every day, sort of thing, and then seeing it sort of at the end of its life. It's kind of like a, a bittersweet moment, really, because if you, I mean, if, you, if you're if you one that's particular with registrations and stuff and you see this particular plane and you're like, God, I used to see that so many times and now it's sat here basically waiting to, to be scrapped sort of thing. So it's, it, it's got that bittersweet kind of feeling about it. Yeah, no, of course. Is there any special livery ones there or is it all sort of the, uh, the standard ones and the one worlds down there? 
You've got the the Negus. Oh uh, yeah, so yeah, a bit of variation on on what's down there. Yeah, and um, we've got a few Norwegian seven three sevens being stored there currently. Hey, well, hopefully it won't be too long before they're back up and about. They're not scrapping them, then. they're just no. just there in the short term. Yeah, I, think, I, I was actually. I think that's what it is. They are there for the for the short term for storage um, mm, sort of thing. Yeah. Um, there's no, as far as I'm aware, there's no plans to scrap them because I think some of them are still quite young. So I think they're just yeah. there to be stored for now. And then um, once a, a buyer or a, or a lesser is found, then obviously they'll go off and um, go to their, their new operators. Um, well, um, in when I went to um, Aero's Gloucester Airport, um, I actually flew in a DA-42 sim with a 737 Norwegian Airlines captain. Oh, not how how was that? How did you get on with it? Yeah, it was it was really good fun actually. Did a few circuits around Gloucester Airport, which were really fun, and he was really impressed with me, which was a bonus. Yeah, no, it certainly sounds good. When we were um, speaking to you during the week, you were you were saying you were going for a, a flying lesson. How how was that the other day? Yeah, it was brilliant actually. Really good experience. Um, it was great. You know, since they were using runway 09 operations it was like since the south side of bristol airport where all the private jets are and all the you know general aviation is it's quite um, a far taxi so you got to taxi past like all of the the big like 737s a321 neos right right in you know really close up and then you had winter's lane on the other side with some of the spotters uh, i'm gonna give a shout out to um the person that um spied me at the end and yeah yeah it was fantastic flew over wells cathedral uh cheddar gorge really good flight oh no it's it's the aspiration is just to get a, a private pi- pilot license or are you looking to become a uh, sort of an airline pilot oh yeah definitely airline pilot what well, i'm sort of planning on maybe working in um as a deckhand on a super yacht to earn some money so i'm not like i go straight into the aviation industry and i've i mean like i've got a massive loan on my hands and a lot of debt so i can earn some money firsthand and then i can you know go in well without any worry about any debt or loans or whatever uh yeah so if, if you had a, a blank sort of canvas where what would your ideal plane and company to fly or who would they be and what would it be? Well, it already depends, to be honest, you know. Um, I, I would quite like to to work in um, corporate aviation, flying maybe the Gulfstream 650. That is based at Bristol. There's two of them. That, that um, someone, someone very important owns a billionaire, but I'm not going to say, say his name for, uh, for some reasons, but an absolute gorgeous jet and you can actually get really close up to it almost like well this is the fence is a bit you know you can't really it's quite hard to shoot your camera through it but yeah it's like really close up yeah I, I've, I've only ever flown from bristol have you ever spotted down at bristol tom many times many times um when yeah winter's lane is one of those um it's one of those spots where it's if you can get away from sort of the fence area and sort of go anywhere that knows Winters Lane will 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 know exactly what I'm what I'm on about. But you've got a great big fence, and then further from that is like a smaller fence. Now, the smaller fence is the easier one because if you've got a ladder or something, if you you only have to go up like two three steps, and you're already looking over the fence, so you've got a clear shot of the runway. Um, and I've got you know shameless self-promotion right here but there are videos on my channel where i've taken videos from that spot where you can just literally look um over the the fence onto the runway so you get like a really clear view um a bit like how you get it at manchester i think with the the south side sort of thing um it's it's that clear it's it's unbelievable and of course being sort of high up as well it's quite a scenic airport as well so um it makes for some really fantastic pictures Oh, yeah, so so between the two of you, is that the best spot at Bristol if I was to go down there? Like, obviously, depending on 
what way they're landing and the winds and what have you. Yeah, um, well, usually for Winters Lane, well, I'm, you know, I usually like to go right next to the taxiway and just get, get waves from the pilots. You know, I, I can't, that's probably the best spot Winters Lane for me. Um, if you're on 27 runway ops, then I definitely recommend Felton Common. Uh, it's a massive like field right at the right at the start of runway two seven, and the planes will literally fly over your head, and like, and they're about like I would say about a hundred feet or so above you. It's like it's like Saint Martin, but um, a lot more, a lot a British version, but the, <laughs> the planes aren't as as low as they are there. Oh, yeah. And then also you've got the the flight lounge where you can where I did my lesson. It's a really nice cafe and a great flight school there you could just park your car in the car park get really close up to all the private jets there where you have um the centerline f fbo fixed based operator um they have like some fantastic jets coming in there yeah absolutely brilliant it's just the fence the fence is so annoying <laughs> oh yeah no it does sound good i'll have to uh make a journey there because it's certainly looking quite busy and you get a good sort of variety of um, different aircraft down there at the moment, don't you? It's all picking up again. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I can't wait until uh, probably, you know, sat in my, my easy jet A321 with, as my captain, I can have my, my friend, my good friend, who's a, a first senior first officer at easy jet based out of Bristol and, or, you know, I'd like to be, I'd like to be a, Kiwi pilot as well, you know, because that's where where it all sort of started, and I've probably flown on Tui the most as well. And you know, I don't really mind any British airline jet to mm, maybe Ryanair, British Airways. You know, I'm not I'm not really too fussed really. Mm. Yeah, no, it certainly sounds like a good option sorry tom no no that's all right i was just going to say talking of obviously um the amount of airlines and uh, and that you've flown to uh what kind of countries have you sort of visited on sort of these these flights that you've been on with like tui or or um you know anyone else that you've flown with oh, I'm, go I'm, I'm gonna have to think off the top of my head so uh i flew i've flown on the ba triple seven i think i flew on the 200 actually 200 and then uh, the 200ER out of Gatwick, 1-2 Orlando. I think that was like 2014 or 2015, 2016. I'd, I have no idea. Just know it was one of those three years. And then I think it was like 2017 or 2018. Mm. I flew on the 777 British Airways to the um, Punta Cana in the Dominican Republic out of Gatwick. Another great flight. And... October, hopefully, I'll be going to Ibiza with um, EasyJet, which, which should be good. Um, I'm going to try and count how many countries I've been to, so just you can can have a little chat while I'm just <laughs> quickly chat, quickly counting. No, that's all right. Um, yeah, no, Steve, if you do <clears throat> plan on going to uh, Bristol for a, a little look-see, um, Winter's Lane will definitely be your um, be your, your your best sort of spot. Once you get there, uh, the road will loop round, so it will go okay. down, loop round to where the threshold is, and then it will go back to where the taxiway is. And even there, you get them taxiing past you as well. And the wings are like very very close, so it's a really good like close little place. But there is a fence, and you can't really look over the fence because it's it's obviously a lot higher than you are. So um, yeah, it's it's fantastic, like really really like. For 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 an airport that isn't quite as busy as sort of your other ones, like the the spot and location is fantastic. Yeah, no, I'll definitely give it a go. And um, Campbell, I can do on the same day. It's not a million miles away, is it? Not really. No, not really. Um, like for me, like for if I was to start, leave from my house to go to Campbell, it's about just over three hours, I think. Oh, yeah, that's pretty. Pretty decent. Getting to um, getting to Bristol from down here is such a pain, though. It's all like really, uh, really little roads and what have you. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's a, uh, 
it's a re- it's a really good little airport because you can look over the the apron and stuff and you can actually see what's what's happening and what's about to come out and things like that so it's it, it's it's really really good it's a really really good spot and the the location of winter's lane is very popular amongst um sort of spotters as well but same with what uh what jack was just saying about which was um which was a uh a felton common one which i haven't I haven't done yet myself because i've always struggled to try and find it but um th- that's always another one that i've always been looking at for your sort of your side on shots if you want landing um if they're on two seven so <coughs> yeah there's, there's still plenty of places to find plenty of places to find you just gotta you just gotta devote the time to find them so yeah no it's, it would be a, a decent <coughs> adventure i'm just uh reading up on one of the comments from uh plane spot of treble five yeah definitely we'll go up one time we'll sort that out for sure mm, definitely do so because we can make a day of that and do a little departure lounge gathering <laughs> up at Bristol yeah, yeah that sounds that sounds good well, yes but yeah um, but they've got they've got quite a few haven't they? they've got um, <clears throat> like Chewy and I did see that they sort of have a daily um, Air Lingus flight Logan Air seem to be in bit of Channel Island stuff so yeah. it is quite a a busy little airport down there. Also, the recent introduction of Lufthansa as well is another one. As well, uh, Lufthansa are going in there with their Embraers. So, um, KLM. Uh, KLM as well, yeah. So, there's a nice variety. Nice variety. And sometimes you'll get uh, sort of, uh, you get Austrian, you'll get sort of some summer charters. I think the last time, last proper time I went up there. Um, no, it wasn't the last proper time I went up there. Uh, back in 2017, I put some pictures on my Instagram. Um, there was a uh, free bird from from turkey as well um doing flights to dalaman in 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 turkey um from bristol as well and of course the the, the we mentioned on the show a couple of weeks back um you know is it air seychelles or something um th- they're going to be coming to bristol via dubai um with their 320 neos so um Ouch. and that's next year in april so there's there's plenty to you know plenty to um to look forward to yeah, it oh, sounds yeah. like it's expanding quite rapidly. I'd also like to mention um, Eurowings starting flights to Prague soon as well. Mm. So that's another one. So yeah, I've got plenty, uh, plenty of um, plenty of things to see. And of course, they've got the three twenty one Neos from EasyJet, and of course now the seven three seven Maxes from Tui. So. Yeah, definitely, mm. definitely plenty to see. Um, Jack, did you work out how many uh, 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 countries you've been to? Yes, seven. Um, which one so, would be your favourite? Uh, I'd probably go with States. Interesting. Just so, it's just so much variety there. I'm just, I'd probably like to, you know, do what like math, Matt Guffmiller and... Um, fly with Owen do like they have like their own like little aircraft and they're just flying around the Caribbean all over the US all the they've been to like 50 all the 50 states and like tiny little aircraft and like some of the scenery you get is absolutely amazing you know it's just honestly incredible mm. definitely um no, I lost my lost train of thought. Let's go on to then, obviously, the, the little bits of um, sort of uh, southwest of England aviation. Um, seems we've you know we've spoken quite a bit about Bristol just now. Um, have you been to many sort of airports in the southwest of England, or is it just Bristol that you've been to for for the moment? I, f- I think I've flown out of Exeter uh, once as a kid. Uh, yeah, that's it, really. Yeah, Exeter really, really struggled, <clears> didn't it, during uh, what sort of happened recently? And it's only these last few weeks that they've had any sort of flights going out of there at all, apart from a few sort of uh, silly old um, journeys. It's really, really suffered, Exeter. Mm. Yeah, and after the, the fall of um, Aer Lingus... Um, What's the one with the ATRs? I forgot the regional. What it's called yeah, now. Stobart. Yeah. yeah, the regional. Yeah, that that was one of their you know key routes after Flyby collapsed, and um, so it's actually really shame that they they can't 
you know, deal with that. And it looks like, you know, Tui are going to pull out of there soon. You know, it's, it's just about like 45 minutes away from Bristol. Uh, and you then you've got Tui operate, you know, a couple of flights a week out of Cardiff as well. And that's an hour away from from Bristol. So, yeah. They make it it's too, just too much, like, you know, too much in one sort of confined area. You know, if you've got, mm. main, like, main sort of operations out of Bristol and you've got a couple out of Cardiff and then you've got the one or two out of Exeter, they may just look at that and go, well, you know, we can do a bit more business out of, um, you know, uh, Bristol and that. They don't, op- they don't operate it from Newquay um, or, mm. or anything like that. So, you know, maybe that's just too much of a stretch, really, to have sort of Exeter in there and... Maybe they'll just look to condense it down to just Cardiff and Cardiff and Bristol. Yeah, and uh, even Bournemouth on the other side are, are operating Chewy flights as well, sort of fifty miles away. Yeah. Um, well, you've got. Um, I think I. I just think you know you could just see Cardiff collapse as well. To be honest, I really wouldn't be surprised if um, Tui pulled out of there. I think you know it's just it's just turned into it used to be you know quite a busy um quite a busy commercial airport welcome it welcome in like and whiz just completely got rid of their whole plan to have and there was like so much hype so many flights going to be going on there it was it was crazy you know i was really surprised and then they just, just pulled out all of the the whiz aircraft base out of there all going to um luton and I think a couple, one or two are going to Doncaster, and yeah, well, you've got all all that is left is, you know, the Eastern Airways to Belfast are uh, a vueling every now and again, and a, I think you get the odd, you know, the odd charter coming in, and you know, they used to have Qatar, you know, it's just turned into a, a maintenance airport for for. Airlines like BA. Yeah. I don't know if they'll get rid of Cardiff purely because it is sort of the airport for Wales, isn't it? Like the capital city of yeah. of the country. I don't. I the can't see it being a popular be decision. Yeah, the the airport yeah. will always be there. It's um, it, it's used for um training purposes as well from the RAF um as well. Mm. So they'll never they'll never get rid of that just because. You know, there'll always be some airlines, even if it's if it's small. Um, you know, you still got the 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 resurrection of, of Flybe, um, yeah. as well, which might sort of add a little bit more to um, to to Cardiff because Flybe were sort of big players at Cardiff as well. Um, so it, it remains to be seen. But yeah, Cardiff will Cardiff won't disappear unless things are very drastic. Well, yeah, there's you know. I only really said that because I've seen a few um, articles over, you know, with the the current Welsh government saying that um, they might, you know, sell it. But you know, I've seen they have had U.S. Air Force C-130s going in. So yeah, you know, they may. Who knows? It could just turn into another Saint Athen. Oh yeah, I wouldn't imagine as well. So there's also a, a flying club there as well. Um... It's where um, arrows. Um, it's where uh, Cat Burton, uh, a former guest on our show, um, sort of does her training from. Uh, uh, sorry, conducts training with with pilots that want to become uh, pilots um, from there as well. So, and at the same time as well, don't forget it was only very recently that Wizz Air launched a base from there as well when they had uh, three or four aircraft doing a, a flyover of of Cardiff itself before landing there. So. You know that they, they they're going to have sort of operations for um, from Wizz Air and and that so it's you know it's going to be uh, Wiz Wiz pulled out. Oh, they pulled out, did they? Yeah, they they, they don't have long. a base anymore. <laughs> Lasted long. Let's <laughs> interrupt. Rob Brown, playing spot, and he was saying, "Do B A still bring the heavies into Cardiff for maintenance?" Because they used to have a maintenance hangar down there, didn't they? Still there. Well, they, it's still there. Yeah. Just had yesterday. I had a seven eight seven flying over about eight thousand feet. Really, not a bad view really from here. When you get you know your BA triple sevens in and all the other nice stuff that goes into Cardiff. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so the maintenance base is still there, and you've still got, um, you know, like your seven eight sevens. Obviously, the the seven four sevens used to go in for maintenance, but triple sevens go in there, and um, I think that's pretty much pretty much that. Anything else goes off to. I know the three eighty goes off to the Philippines for maintenance, um, and. I'm just trying to think where someone will probably mention where sort of the others go if they if they need maintenance and stuff. But the heavies go into into Cardiff because it's closer and, and things like that. Except for the A380 because Cardiff can't handle um, the, the 380. Well, there's a purpose then, doesn't it? The airport. 100. percent Yeah, 100. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Um. Yeah. So yeah, 100. percent It it still serves uh, the purpose and. Like I said, if it's not being used and because it's quiet sort of thing um, in between sort of flights and that, you know, um, like I said, the RAF or, or the Navy will use it for um, like training in and out, uh, you know, touch and goes um, or um, as a plane spot of 555 has just put the A34600 from um, European Cargo Go over to Cardiff um, for sort of, you know, like pilot training and things like that. So, uh, or, or crew training, rather, I should say. So, um, oh, yeah, quite rarely. Yeah, it is rare they go uh, over well, there, you, but it's it still get you know they it, it gets its yeah. use. That's the main thing. Yeah, you say that they uh, last Tuesday actually they they spent all day going up to Cardiff and back from Bournemouth and the three forty six hundreds, but it is only once every four four months at the most that they do that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. There was a time um, last year actually where they came down to, to uh, they went from Newquay to, uh, sorry to Cardiff, went to Cardiff and then did Cardiff Newquay and back for the entire day, which was a lot of fun because then they went over my house and I could see that because my house is sort of situated from, sort of anything that's coming from the, west of the UK down to Newquay, sort of Manchester and things like that, you know, like up north and that, um, if it comes down then. Um, I'll end up seeing it. So it was nice to see that sort of, you know, going over every 20 minutes or so. Um, And uh, obviously because it was on lockdown and stuff, I I couldn't really get to the airport to actually properly see it. So the back garden was, uh, was sort of the spotting location for that one. Yeah, no, it's great when they do the training, you fill your boots on landing and take off photos. And if you get it wrong, you've got 20 minute wait to have another crack at it. It's really, really good when they, when they do the training runs. Yeah. Um, so seeing as we've just mentioned Newquay Airport, we'll have a quick chat about um, Newquay Airport um, as well. G7. So... Go on. I was, just, I was just, you know, saying about our G7. Yes. That's going to be a main topic now. It will be our main topic, yes. So, um, so it's owned by uh, the Cornwall Council um, and... Um, in 2017, the airport, which for anyone that's flown out of it, knows how incredibly tiny it is. Um, it's a very, very tiny airport, but it handled 461,300 passengers in the year of 2017. Um, wow. Which is amazing. It's amazing for um, for um, such a such a small airport. Um, a former RAF base of uh, St. Morgan um, as well. Um Quite a few airlines operate into Nuki. Nuki has seen an expansion over the last sort of two, three years of of airlines coming in, such as um, Eurowings is one of them. British Airways obviously starting up as well. EasyJet starting up as well. EasyJet, uh, Ryanair go into into Nuki from Faro in Portugal um, and Alicante oh, yeah. as well. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, um, Alicante as well. Um, Eastern Airways with their uh, jet streams, they they in and out of there to sort of Leeds um, and Belfast and things like that. Um, so, and obviously, as we mentioned, we had the, uh, the the G7 summit as well, which I think is a day that myself and the spotters that were there um, will never ever forget. For me personally, because I was absolutely burnt to a crisp, you could have served me on a plate with a side dish of salad, but. <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it was an incredible day and one that a lot of people won't forget because of seeing um the you know air force one korean air force one 
uh, Japanese Air Force One, Boris Force One, um, you know, all these planes that you will probably never see down here again. Um, and you've had the opportunity to, to see them, and, and it was just absolutely fantastic. Really, really good. Yeah, didn't um, he? Boris went on his uh, the Titan Airways A321 Neo. Uh, the UK government have like sort of you know coughed, coughed up as as you know sort sort of theirs now. Um, I was really interested how um, Canada brought their Airbus A310, and um, you know it'll be interesting, especially since Ca Canada have a new a new election coming up in set in september you know maybe if if there is a, if a new leader if he might decide you know let's, let's get a new fleet since these a310s are starting to get a bit bit out of date or so we did have uh we did have a guest on actually uh, i think it was episode oh god 12 or 13 it was um we had a, a chat from canada um it was episode twelve, I should say. Uh, Throttle Aviation. He he was from Canada, and he said that um, you know they are looking to retire the the, the three tens um, within the next sort of couple of years. What they'll replace it with, I don't know. I imagine it'll be something. I can't imagine it'll be too big, like a three fifty or something. But they'll probably replace it with something. Um, but yeah, it was amazing to see you know, the three ten, and especially in the new, excuse me, in the new livery as well. That was that was a really interesting um, experience to see that um, all the C17s that came in as support. Um, God, the amount of C17s I saw that you know for that week alone was was frightening, um, and um, it was it was just incredible. It's one of those days that will stick with you forever because, like I say, a lot of you know, Nuki doesn't i mean it can handle the 747 as we've had british airways 747s in for scrapping and things like that but as passenger service and stuff it, it hasn't done it and you know to to get like um you know to get air force one and the korean force one in there all at the same time and the triple sevens and things like that it was just it was just incredible just absolutely amazing yeah a real real uh once in a lifetime sort of uh week wasn't it to get to see all of that rather than on tv or in books or whatever oh 100 percent. yeah oh 100 percent. it's like a kind of a day that you were supposed to um a day that you just had to you know it's a, a, a day that you had to just go and do some spotting i was weighing up the option of either going to um heathrow to see uh, air force one or try and find a spot location because it's very hard for Nuki to have a spot location at that time because of the the security and things like that. So I thought I'll try my luck with Nuki anyway, just to see if I can get somewhere. And I did, and a lot of other people found places as well. And you know, I'll, I'll give a shout out to the, the police and stuff that came down from all over the country and how good they were to us as well. They stood by us. They knew we weren't you know dangerous or anything, and you know they stood by us and had a good chat with us. It was it was fantastic. Really, really good. I think you've made the right choice though. I, I, to see him in your hometown, your your local airport, made it so much more special than if you'd seen it at Heathrow, which you're sort of used to seeing those big, heavy aircrafts. I know they're totally different because yeah. they're government, but to say you saw him go in and out of your actual local airport sort of put the cherry on the cake of that one for you, I'd say. Absolutely. Uh, like Fantastic. Really, really good. Really, really good. I'll, I'll memory that lived me forever. Um We'll quickly throw it over to Ian um, with some comments. Yep, we've got a few uh, comments from um, from Rob Brown Plane Spotting. He says, um, I, "I mean, I'm going to call it Mag One. I always have done. Uh, <laughs> it's got the widest runway in the UK by all accounts." What, what were you and calling it? And he misses it? the Nimrod. That big pardon. What were you calling it? I call it Mag One. I Mag always one. have done. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> wasn't that the little furry thing off the Gremlins? <laughs> it, could, it could have been. <laughs> I just thought it was one of those popular yeah, greetings Morgan, you tell it? people. Mm. I just thought it was one of those greetings <laughs> that you just tell people. You know, you got someone and go Maguan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's, it's got the widest runway um, in the UK by all accounts. It does indeed. Yes. Also, one of the longest. Right. right. And he also said that he misses an Nimrod, so I'm presuming that the Nimrod, was it based there? Uh, 
did it just fly in there a lot? I don't know. They had some Nimrods based at uh, St. Morgan. Um, yeah. During the, you know, before it sort of uh, was uh, deactivated as a, an RAF base. So um, that's why, obviously, there's a, a they've put a, a, a full cockpit of a Nimrod now in the museum um, that they've turned into a, I think, no, it's not a simulator, is it? Or is it? I think it is. I think it's they've, they've turned it into a simulator and they've got it there now. So you can actually um, go and sort of fly the uh, Nimrod out of uh, Nuki just as on the on a simulator. But you've got the full. Oh, that's pretty there. cool, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic. I've got to go down there and see it myself. And give yeah, it, it sounds give really it really good. That yeah, that'd be an experience, wouldn't it? Definitely. Um, he also says fifteen double oh one Cam Force One yep. was just recently brought back to flying after an accident. At CFB Trenton, so I've heard about that. Uh, don't know too yeah. much about it though. So if, if anybody knows a little bit more info, um, give it to us, yeah. and then we can uh, sort of brush up on that. Then, yeah, and they're also looking at um, second and A three thirties to convert to MRTT. Sounds about right. Uh, sounds yeah. about right. That's what um, uh, Australia did with um, their A three thirty tanker that came in that day as well um that used to belong to Qantas so it's easily easily uh, done yeah yeah i mean and it, it, after flying uh, what was it an a an a310 a310 yeah 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 so they need something bigger than that don't they something, i mean it's not going to have a long range is it uh, well when you imagine the 310 flying for air transat and stuff you know doing transatlantic routes and that it it can do it um, but it's whether obviously yeah. they want to sort of keep up with everybody and you know go for something a little bit more, um, a little bit more newer, which you know at some point they will end up doing. Um, but it's more of a case of as and when, really. Yes, yeah, also, yeah, yeah. Um, and Boeing offered Canada KC forty six, but a sour taste after complaints around the C series A two twenty debacle. I have no idea what went on there. So KC forty six is the obviously the the seven six seven two hundred tanker if I'm correct, which obviously they're still building now, which is is really bizarre. Yeah. But um, yeah, I don't know about the the unless it's just the the fact that Airbus bought it, maybe Airbus obviously took the rights of the the C series. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I, I I would. I don't know. We, we with Canada. I think you, you you're sort of torn, aren't you? Because you're still like sort of a British colony sort of thing. You're not not colony, but you know, uh, part of um, the Commonwealth, aren't you? But you're sort of attached to America, so you're sort of going to be sort of swayed towards Boeing as well at the same time, aren't you? So it must be quite difficult to um, you know cash your allegiances to to either. You know, a European plane or an American plane—it must be quite difficult for Canada. They're sort of stuck in the middle, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, um, another couple of comments just come in now from somebody called Panzerfaust three hundred and twenty. What do you think of the F four Phantom? Which is a bit of a, a random one, but I thought it was a fantastic plane personally. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the same. I thought it was absolutely phenomenal. It's a proper like chunky beast of a of a plane. Yeah. Um, and any chance I can get to see one at a museum or whatever, I'm, I'll gladly take. So, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Um, absolutely, Steve? yeah. Yeah, no, a, a real kind of a classic fighter, isn't it? It's a decent aircraft. Very quick as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think it takes you back to times when um, you had your Phantoms, Buccaneers, Jaguars and things like that. Yeah. Um, proper, proper jets, weren't they? They were, they were. Yeah, um, Jack, definitely. what about you? You going off topic slightly? Uh, fan of the Phantom or not? Oh uh, yes, nice jet. Nice jet. Fantastic. Uh, and he also says, "What do you think of the retirement of the Air 10 We'll let you go on this one, Ian. First. Very sad. Well, I, 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 well, I didn't realise they were retiring the Air Ten. Um, I think it's a. Uh, is it just a US? Air Force only plane. I don't know anybody else who flies it. I'll be quite honest with you, but um, it's certainly it's one on its own, isn't it? The Air Ten, definitely. It's it's definitely one on its own. It's it's not like any conventional 
fighter jet or anything like that. It's, um, I don't know, it's just an absolute grout. Well, it's an absolute beast, isn't it, of a thing? Definitely. So, yeah, it's, it'd be a chance to retire that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a real sad. unique one. Yeah, I love the... the <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what it were known for, weren't it? But I think... <clears throat> I think in this day and age, you've got other. Um, I, I think even an Apache helicopter could fulfil the role of an A10. To be quite honest, couldn't it? Yeah, Steve. Yeah, well, the uniqueness of it is amazing, but obviously time moves on, and you get better, uh, better aircraft or even helicopters that are up to the job. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, we've got Rob Brown as well. Um, he's saying Boeing. Complained that the C series was being underpriced, so there was government that slaps a tariff on it, yeah, making it economically, yeah, thus making it not economically viable. I think I actually quite rem I remember that. Um, yeah, the the Yanks didn't they, they stuck a big tariff, didn't they, on the um, on the C series, didn't they, when when Herbal stuck it over to make it <clears throat> unviable for um, I suppose the U.S. market, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> just uh, da, 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 da. yeah, a couple more in there, Ian, and then we'll continue. Uh, I'd like to uh, you know when about like the G seven, right? It's a bit a bit crazy how like G one man and his wife needed like tons of planes to just just for them, like, and they were going to discuss climate change, like oh. it's a bit you know <laughs> controversial. It, it yeah. was massively, um, massively controversial. We had loads and loads and loads of protests because of um, obviously the arrival of of Joe Biden and and you know the first lady and that and um, you know, all the all the equipment, the planes, um, and everything that um, that sort of came along with him. And then obviously, like like you said, the the down here to discuss climate change. So it's. Yeah, double-edged sword, really, because you're trying to do something good, but then you're also <laughs> um, annoying a lot of the, um, you know, snowflakes and all the ones that sort of, you know, um, so far up Greta Thunberg's backside, it's unreal. They bring all the uh, decoy planes as well. Oh, yeah. Decoy yeah, we ones had, as well, yeah. Um, Cardiff, they, they flew in like a Delta A330 into Cardiff just with like some... Apparently it was like spare stuff. You had like KC one thirty fives constantly flying into like Cardiff and then going down to like Newquay with like the the typhoons as well and the air tanker shutting the place down every day with, with like the make sure the 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 air the airspace was mm. like clear and then you had like KC tens and all sorts going into Cardiff and even that's that's like f far away from. Cornwall. Yeah, yeah. A, a friend of mine, he um, does drone photography for a living, and he sent me. It's like the no fly zones and that, and it it started pretty much in East Devon and took out the entire sort of western peninsula of the country, and he wasn't allowed to fly his drone over a hundred meters for that entire week mm. without prior permission, and that it was crazy how. Sort of on top of it, they were in such a large radius as well. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, we had road closures and everything all right around the airport, right through villages and stuff that were within sort of a radius. So um, it was an absolute uh, pig to to try and get through. But where I managed to, to, to do the spotting and that, I had to park my car about 10 minutes away and then walk to the spot in order for it to be safe. Um, otherwise, they would have towed your car away without you even knowing. So... Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Proper, uh, proper nightmare, but um, yeah, it's it's still worth it in the end. But um, was, yeah, was the uh, uproar more or kind of less than the positiveness that was surrounding it in in the local area? Were more people annoyed by Not what really. was going on? No, every time it was mentioned on the news and stuff, there were a lot of people, like a lot of schools, a lot of um, like local businesses, doing everything and anything that they could to sort of welcome the the leaders and stuff um i know uh boris johnson allocated some oh, what was it it was one local business in st ives i think it was um to do some i think it's like a uh, like a welcome package or something 
Um, Ginsters. No, not Ginsters. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go to Cornwall without having a pasty. Yeah, that's it. Hello, hello Joe Biden. Um, as your first taste of uh, the southwest of England, here's a pasty. Um, <laughs> Straight out of Ginster's factory, still nice and piping hot for you. And a, yeah, and some really ropey cider. Get on yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Point yeah, of it's got tubes in it. Here's a Ginster's pasty and some scrumpy for you. Yeah. <laughs> we have some ice cubes and an umbrella and just like Steve likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget well, like the cherry as well. The other day, we, yeah, we get the sunshine down here. You need it now and again. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I suppose northerners wouldn't know what that is. Um, I have no clue. We did have sunshine <laughs> once, but we flogged it. Yeah. We sold it. We'll just know Steve as the South Coast Del Boy if he likes a little cherry on his cider. Uh, yeah, with an umbrella, of course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, but no, going back to um, going back to new to the actual airport itself. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, one. No, let me count that again. It is eight. Eight airlines are currently operate uh, to and from. Some are seasonal. Some are there all year round. Um, obviously, Blue Island um, fly from Jersey to Newquay. British Airways do seasonal Belfast, um, and uh, but that's with their um, uh, God. What is their? Is that, what's this? Uh, what's the one that goes city something? What is it? What's the British Airways one that's out of London City? What do they call that? City flyer or oh, something. Oh, city, city flyer, isn't it? I think. Yeah, yeah. that's it. I've lo- I lost my train of thought for a second then. Um, so the Belfast route is done with uh, BA City flyer, and of course London Heathrow is done with the main line. Um, Eastern Airlines is seasonal to Leeds Bradford. EasyJet is seasonal as well to uh, Birmingham, Glasgow, Inverness, Gatwick, and Manchester. Um, Eurowings is, is seasonal to Dusseldorf, which used to be operated by Dash 8, but is now operated by an A320 or an A319 from time to time. Uh, you also got the Isles of Scilly Sky Bus, which goes to, obviously, the Isles of Scilly um, with, a, 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 I think it's a Twin Otter. Um, Logan Air, they do Aberdeen, Edinburgh, Manchester, Newcastle. That's all year round. Seasonal is Inverness, which is due to start next year. And, of course, Teesside as well, which is also starting to see a lot more action. Um and Ryanair all year round is Alicante and seasonal is Faro. Um, obviously, passenger numbers took a big hit um, in 2020 because of obviously lockdown. But uh, from 2017, as we mentioned, 461,300 um, passengers held. That's a, an increase of 24.2% um, up from obviously the year before, which was uh, 371,500. So a massive increase. Um, and just year on in, it was just continuing to build. And then obviously the, the pandemic hit. And um, yeah, sadly, um, the airport sort of didn't really see as much action. But hopefully um, now it will start to um, sort of increase and um, sort of get back to sort of seeing the numbers that it, it should have done. Obviously, domestic travel is is very popular at Newquay. Um, but I'm just hoping that at some point airlines will begin to um, sort of favour Newquay and sort of go, well... It's a lovely place. We'll we'll start flying there, sort of thing. Yeah, I'm just looking at the numbers now. Uh, the Heathrow route absolutely knocks the spots off everything else. The passenger numbers it's sixty thousand more than the nearest uh, nearest route. It's well, obviously this is pre yeah. pre uh, what's gone on, but yeah, yeah, Heathrow's hugely popular. It's it's the connections and stuff. It's a route that I want to do actually. I did Newquay to Gatwick with Flybe when they were around in their Embraer one nine five. So I'd like to be able to do uh, British Airways in a 320 or 319 um, as well. And I'm also keeping yeah, an eye yeah. out for the, um, the, the the retro livery as well, because that's come down here a few times. So I'd like to be able to kind of get that before that disappears um, in a couple months' time. So, I recall um, you saying a few a few weeks ago, sorry, that the uh, approach into New Keys about as good as it gets as well, isn't it? It's as good as it gets. You You can't beat it. You really, really can't beat it. Um, it's it's just if you're coming in over the beach, that's that's the one where you know you've hit the jackpot. Is when you're coming in on the beach, and that's sort of easterly operations. Um, you come in oh, over yeah. like the bay and that like Carbis Bay. It's just it's fantastic. You, you cannot beat it. It's probably up there one of the best approaches, I think. Yeah, just sorry to go back on old ground quickly, but out of those uh, flights you've done, Jack, what was the best sort of arrival into an airport that you can remember? 
Well, most of my landings I can remember probably tend to be like in the night time, to be honest. But um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, to try and I'd probably say I can I could sort of remember the time when I was sat in a, a, the BA triple seven to Orlando, and you could you know flying over like uh, West Berm- West Bermuda and t- descending over West Bermuda, you know. The waters were like really, really nice, and you had um, uh, the 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 Floridian coast itself is just you know really, really gorgeous. And then you've got um, West Palm Beach when we were when we were flying into um, Orlando. That was that was gorgeous with along with the Bahamas as well in the distance with the. Um, you know the the Freeport Island and the Treasure Treasure K Islands as well, and Great Harbor, but the actual Bahamas you couldn't couldn't see it that well. But yeah, really really cool. Yeah, no, that, that sounds really nice. Yeah, mm. definitely. Fantastic. Um, leave a like on the stream if you're enjoying the episode. Um, at the moment, um, we're gonna be here for uh, another sort of fifteen minutes or so. Um, so leave a like uh, if you are enjoying the show and if you are new around here please do feel free to consider subscribing the channel is currently two subs away from uh, 900 and we'd like to kind of reach that Um, so um, yeah please help us out if you can it'd be much appreciated Um, let's move on to uh, an airport which as we mentioned earlier um, has seen sort of a huge um, sort of decline should we say because of of various reasons um exeter airport situated just off of the a30 dual carriageway um it's a it's one of those weird airports that again is used for things like the air shows so obviously the red arrows go in quite a bit um it was a former ref base as well um, homing uh, squadron, uh, two one, uh, two thirteen squadron, eighty seven squadron, and six hundred one squadron, as well, um, and obviously airlines including Origny, uh, Blue Island, British Airways, seasonal with their city flyer, uh, the Isles of City Skybus, Logan Air, Ryanair, and Tui, um, all operate um, from Exeter, but it has seen a lot of decline really. Um, so in 2007, the airport handled over 1 million passengers per year for the first time. Um, but that number has sort of declined over the last sort of 10 years leading up to 2018, um, dropping down to 931,000. The, the airport itself closed during the pandemic. Um, and it's sort of starting to slowly, you know, it, the fact that Flyby have gone are a huge myth. And that's, you know, it was one of their big sort of players and stuff. They have, like, the um, night post um, uh, aircraft from West Atlantic as well, Royal Mail as well at the same time. Um, and, uh, Jack, you said it was one that you've flown from, is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah, it was, actually. Do you remember where you flew to from it? Mm, um... I'm not a hundred percent sure, but would it was probably I guess would probably be um probably Cyprus or yeah that's my guess yeah no that's fine but yeah, yeah not like Tom says the decline of uh of Exeter's is quite staggering. You've only got to go on flight radar, and it's it's sort of yeah, barely scraping the mm-hmm. barely scraping being a regional airport these days. Yeah, just with the the Belfast British Airways flight, I think British Airways have just you know almost almost like sort of saved them in a way, you know, giving them a bit of a a kick almost. Yeah, I think. When you look at Exeter and um, Southampton, there's a massive amount of similarities between the two. They've both both suffered hugely from Flybe going, and they've not been able to replace it because of 
what's gone on, nobody's going to take a punt on a, a new airport. They're just going to stick to what they know. So I think like they're desperate for everywhere to reopen so we can get these uh, airliners back in to sort of make it successful again. Yeah, I can't even... I don't think I can even find a, a TUI flight from Exeter. That's, you know, that's with the the green... Yeah, Dalaman cancelled. Nope, nothing from... Nothing from, like... Yeah, nothing from Friday or to Tuesday. They haven't got any, any TUI. And if it's Dalaman, then that's just that's just cancelled. Yeah, I know that when uh, a couple of years ago there was a, a really vicious thunderstorm in in Bournemouth, and Exeter was sort of the uh, diver airport of choice at the time. But it was a a chewy flight, so obviously they've gone into a chewy hub to keep things sort of cheaper and simpler for them. But hmm. ex- yeah, they certainly used it as diver airport. Yeah, from here. Hmm. Um, I seen this morning. You know, I'm thinking. You know, maybe possibly. You know, Exeter is like the only, you know, only commercial airport, probably where you know private jets could actually only place in Devon that private jets could actually land in. So I've seen a lot of private jet action going on in Exeter. So, um, you know, it could be you know a good shout for. For people, you know, come to come to Devon. You know, you could see a big, you know, financial sort of boost in in Cornwall and Devon areas, especially with um, you know, business. A lot of, you know, a definitely, definite thing that could that could go on there. You know, possibly would be able to save the airport. Yeah, I think some of the, the problem that Exeter have is. If you live on that M5 sort of area, getting up to Bristol is so fast and the options are, are massively uh, more open to you. And if you live exactly. down sort of Newquay, Cornwall Way, then you've got your own airport, which is doing reasonable European destinations and the massive bonus of you can jump on a, a British Airways and be in Heathrow in 40 minutes. So yeah. Exeter is sort of piggy in the middle of two sort of relatively decent airports there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bristol definitely takes most of the traffic. Um, you know, the past hour um I've seen about and we're probably gonna go about let me just be accurate. Seven arrivals in the past hour, which is, you know, just in between half seven and half eight, you know, a Ryanair from Dublin's just landed. You know, on approach, just looking at it right now. Um, and then you've got actually, you know, Cardiff has started their n- a new route from Cardiff to Dublin, which is nice to see. Uh, yeah, a nice sort of short hop across the water from there. Uh, that's, that's definitely. Sh- yeah. But you think you've got quite looking at the southwest of England when you've got your new key, Exeter, Bournemouth, Bristol. I'm not quite sure about Cardiff, but I would still condense it into that sort of corner of the country. Yeah. Don't you think you've got quite a lot of... I mean, they're all decent airports what will take a lot of decent traffic mm-hmm. in, all trying to battle with themselves to become the Southwest airport and, and rather than everybody working together sort of thing, everyone's trying to... You know, they're all working against each other and, and sort of not getting anywhere. Don't you think that's... That's well, happening down there. That's, well, how, that's how I feel. Well, yeah, you're right about that, but I'm going to have to say that Bristol is definitely the airport of the southwest. You know, I'm just <clears> going <throat> to just going to count. Um, you know, this is odd. Like, I'm going to say about like fifty so departures tomorrow. You know, it's, it's a lot, a lot more busier. You know, compare comparing it to Newquay, comparing it to Bournemouth. You know, it's or it's you know you can just times it infinite times, and and Bristol would still have a lot far more traffic. Um, another, you know, in the past past seven days, um, we've had thirty one flights to Palma de Palma de Mallorca, so. 
Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Mm. I reckon Exeter, Cornwall, Bournemouth. Well, Bournemouth's a key cargo hub. You know, definitely the cargo in Bournemouth is definitely sorting it out. But yeah, you're definitely right with they need to work together. But um, yeah. another thing with Wales wise. Um, the problem with Cardiff, why it's not getting so much traffic, is because it's literally right next to Bristol. It's only the um, the mouth of the River Seven, and then Cardiff's right there. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm no expert, but I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea to maybe put it up in, you know, the, the valleys a little bit, you know, just where, um. You know, a li- just where a little bit further away, so maybe you know, Swansea area. Um, you know, I think the other thing, I think the other thing from the Cardiff is it sits on the M4, which mm, yeah, go go straight to Heathrow if you follow the road. Mm, so exactly, it's a nice, it's a nice easy yeah, journey to Heathrow. To Bristol as well, doesn't it? Well, mm. yeah, but for for larger. Uh, sort of mm. transatlantic or whatever you can be in Heathrow in yeah. sort of two hours from from Bristol what about sort of capacity at Bristol compared to I mean we, we know at Bournemouth they get the 340s but if it's raining they can't take off would that be an issue at Bristol for instance with, with runway length or anything like that um well we've got I would say it's a medium sized runway uh we do have this the 787 operate out of it on well, pre-pandemic, we had routes to Orlando and Cancun, and then just before the pandemic hit, they were about to start Barbados routes, but those got can just cancelled. But it would be it would be brilliant if they, you know, possibly if they did restart. Hopefully, but who knows? Mm. You can definitely yeah. get an A three thirty. It would be a, a you know good shout for. Airlines like Virgin Atlantic, British Airways, you know, base like, you know, 1787 down here for transatlantic routes. That it will be brilliant for the the Southwest as a, as a whole, you know, be able, being able to get on a plane that isn't, you know, you would have to buy a package holiday with for, whereas you have to do for, for TUI most usually. Um, you know, where. Virgin started routes from Edinburgh. Virgin, probably, you know. Who, who owns Bristol Airport? Not the same group uh, on um, Heathrow or anything like that, is it? I'm pretty I think it's sure. the same chaps who got Bournemouth. Yeah, I'm right. pretty sure it's um, a privately owned airport, not owned by like, the council. Right, right, right. Although the council <laughs> made the decisions on the... Um, on whether they would expand the airport. That's been big news re- over the past year where you've had the election for the local, you know, the, the area surrounding Bristol Airport. That that was properly deciding whether Bristol Airport's going to have its expansion, but the uh, the Green Party won, so it wasn't happening. Uh, yeah, that wasn't going to happen when it was the Green Party. No. Just to uh, go back to your question earlier on, Ian, about the 340s, I just had a quick look now. Uh, out of the sort of three main ones we've discussed, Bristol's six and a half thousand meters, Bournemouth's just short of eight thousand, and Newquay's massive. It's almost ten thousand meters. The uh, the runway yeah, down at Newquay. I, I think Newquay's the second biggest in country, isn't it? The second something, longest runway, something like that. Yeah, yeah it's like, a massive runway. Yeah, yeah that yeah, we call yeah. Rise Norton is is the first, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a funny one, really, isn't it? When you mm-hmm. there is such there's potentially a, a lot of business and a lot of, I mean, you look at Manchester in in relation to Heathrow, for instance, but you've and you've got Birmingham in, in between, I suppose, as well. But Manchester's like the main hub of the north, and you haven't really got a main hub of the southwest, have you? Because like well, I say, it's all Bristol. scattered about all over, isn't it? Yeah, the Manchester catchment area is huge, isn't it, when you look at it? But we're sort of spaced out. It's like big city, 50 miles of nothing, another big city or town, and then another good sort of bit of wilderness. Yeah, yeah. Definitely go with, I'd definitely say that Bristol 
would would definitely be like you know the center of the southwest however you know it's just it's right at the start of where you would consider the southwest if you know what i mean you know you've got it's like you could say it's like four 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 hour drive from like the start of the southwest all the way down to uh cornwall where you know penzance st ives way um, yeah that's that's the problem isn't that's it that's the problem yeah if you know yeah say if it was in Exeter that would literally be perfect because then but you know Exeter can't really take it however you know Bristol does the trick very popular airport well yeah the, yeah. the passenger numbers obviously reflect that Bristol are doing it well yeah hmm. yeah that's it I mean I mean these the airlines who fly into it must do the obviously they do the homework don't they and they realize where the um footfall is going to be i was just thinking when tom was saying earlier about it's three hours to get to bristol from where he lives to mm. um, campbell campbell was no i beg, I beg your pardon campbell well i mean how far is campbell an hour away from bristol no 45 minutes is it for, well yeah 45 minutes up to an hour so you're still like, a good couple of hours away from bristol aren't you yeah that's but the yeah. problem with the m5 it's an absolutely nightmare <laughs> motorway yeah you know yeah. took me about Two hours to get from to get to Kemble. Right, was that, what, was that from Bristol? Yeah, but that was just for the, the traffic. Was an absolute nightmare. Yeah, that I mean, day. It's, it's that kind of place, isn't it? Unfortunately, it's, sure, it's yeah. a it's a beautiful part of the world, isn't it? And uh, you, you know, that's I suppose that comes with living down there. I suppose. And I was just thinking, yeah. from, from where I live, if if I went two hours, I've got. I've got Blackpool, I could get to Newcastle, Leeds, Bradford, I could get to Manchester, I could get to Liverpool, I could get to Birmingham, uh, probably East Midlands as well if I wanted to. So living up where I would live, you've got an absolute mass of airports around you. But if you're in southwest of England, you, you, you are really, really restricted, aren't you, to, to pretty much one or two places, and that's it, isn't it? Mm. Unless you're willing well. to travel. Yeah, well, I'm sort of on, yeah. on the fringe, I'd say, of the southwest in Bournemouth, and I can do Heath for an, an hour and twenty. But like you say, for easiness, there's not there's not a huge choice down here. And obviously, Tom to get to to Heath is a real mission. Oh God, yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Well, it's, it's a flight, isn't it, Tom? You did it once, didn't you? Uh, to Gatwick, I did. I'd like to do the Heathrow one, as I mentioned earlier, with uh, British Airways doing the. Um, you know, Nuki to Heathrow run on a on the three nineteen or something. I think that would be quite cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. Uh, <clears throat> it's, it's, to say that we're only a small island, you, you've sort of you're sort of isolated in a lot of ways, aren't you? Down in in southwest, yeah. In regards to you know, like links to transport and things like that. And I suppose it's not just we airlines as well. I mean, you, you have the same problem with. Um, with train lines as well, I suppose, don't you? And other, other, I mean, your motorway network and things like that. So that's why we it, were, it's just uh, that's it's an we afterthought, isn't it? With um, the the loss of Flyby, um, because mm. it was a, a connection to different places, and then as soon as Flyby left, it was it was it almost sort of isolated us even further, really. Yeah, it did do really, didn't it? Yeah, it's such a shame, yeah. such a shame. But uh, mm. yes, a um, couple more comments in there, Ian, um, and then we will start to wrap this show up. Yeah, um, let me just scroll back a few because it's been a while. So, yeah, we've got Grey Blue saying, uh, nice show, thumbs up. So, yeah, thanks very much, Grey Blue. Big Appreciate that. Um, Rob Brown playing spotting 15001. Jump the chocks during maintenance at CFB Trenton. Damaged, damaged the port wing and engine cowling, along with the nose and fuselage. Came close to a write-off. Oh, do you know what? I did hear about that. Yeah, I do know about that. Yeah, yeah. Right. I just thought there might have been a different one after that. <clears throat> right, right. I mean, how does it jump the chocks? I thought the... Um... Oh, I don't know. There's a reason for it in there, I suppose. How did that A3 uh... for Etihad yeah, jump the, to uh, the the chocks at, um, at Toulouse and write itself off, you know? Yeah, I suppose it can happen, can't it? it? Can happen. I mean, do, do they put chocks under all, all the... All the landing gear uh, yeah i imagine it might have been like an yeah. engine run sort of thing and it was just too powerful and just went over the chocks and that was it 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't take much. Well, it doesn't take much, I suppose. Well, they're, yeah. only, they're only small, aren't they? The chocks at the end of the day <clears> in relation to the size of a plane. Um, Rob Brown playing spot again. UN, Cli- UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, November 2021. Happy days. Um, lots of aircraft and world leaders accept it. Uh, Expected, including Air Force One. That's correct. That'll be interesting up at Glasgow. Yes, COP26 is um, a bit more than the G7. Um, but yeah, oh, you're going to have. Descending onto Glasgow. That's probably Presswick, I reckon. I would say yeah. so. I'd say Presswick. Presswick's a good shot. Because, you know, I don't think Glasgow's going to be able to, to uh, be able to welcome every single jet. And, you know, Glasgow, when welcomed you know you know in the past donald trump when when he came to the uk he flew and wanted to go to scotland he went into into presswick that's because yeah. it's you know it's <clears throat> almost like the the saint Athan cardiff of of scotland you know it's sort of like a a military but non-military base where they come and practice but it's not actually a base but they come in a lot yeah yeah they get a lot of um 787-8's up there as well, don't they, up in Presswick? Well, yeah. the cargo flies up there, doesn't it? Yeah, 747 Cargo Lux. Yeah, I I, I, def- I definitely think that it's going to be Presswick. Uh, I reckon, you know, Glasgow's a big, big airport with, with many airlines um, coming in and out. I just I just can't see, see them operating here. Uh, you know, uh, I, th- I think that's a good shout. That you've also got Edinburgh as well, haven't you? Um, yeah, that's true. But then again, that's that's just like it's just like uh, Glasgow, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're gonna yeah. have UN's massive, isn't it? It's got pretty much every single country in the world. Other than... I think I think I don't know whether it, uh, correct correct me if I'm wrong, but someone's telling me there's 52 members at UN, but it's probably a damn sight more than that to be quite no, honest. No, I think it. Like two two hundred or oh, something. Oh, is it like, right? Right. Yeah. But yeah. but like a lot of those countries don't even have government planes. So uh, oh, I can imagine to, uh... them getting a lift off somebody else, can't they? Oh yeah. Well, um, well, we can sort all of our our little Commonwealth colonies out. I wonder if Manchester might get a shout then in that. To be quite honest, because yeah, possibly. That's, yeah, a good shout. that's worth keeping an eye on that. Living where I live, I'd so. say possibly, but it might be very unlikely. Yeah, I, I, I'm just going to say yeah. It's probably going to be fully, fully just fully, Glasgow fully Presswick. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to keep my eye on that. Um, all right. Um, so Rob Brown playing spotting said Ontario teacher pension pl- plan on to Bristol. Correct. One of the shortest international in, international airport runways at two thousand meters. That's it. Yeah, we. I've actually that. heard that before. Yeah, mm. we discussed that before. Can't th- can't remember which episode it was, but we have mentioned it. Yeah. Before. Um. Um. Oh god, which one? Was which... It? Don't know. We've mentioned it. I know we've mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, plane spotter five five five. So he's saying, in a way, if you had. The passenger numbers at Bristol um, and Bournemouth, with the cargo at Bournemouth as well. If you if you merge the two together, it, it will make a pretty major airport. In, you know, on the likes yeah, of would. Manchester. Or, um, he says Heathrow. But I won't say as far big as Heathrow, but I would say Manchester or somewhere around Midlands. I would imagine. But I think if the two were merged together, they would make quite a decent, uh, busy airport, wouldn't they? I a, so. a main yeah. a main hub. I would imagine. I'm, I'd probably say, you know, probably the size of Manchester capacity, probably even more, possibly, if they did if they did merge. But not sure how it's how it's possible. Um, with the you know the UN Glasgow thing, North Korea are, are actually, um, in fact, UN members. Do you reckon they they would bring their Ilyushin seventy six or one of their their other bizarre aircraft. I don't think they're allowed to fly over our airspace. No. Or... <laughs> no. <laughs> It'd be really really nice if they did. Yeah, yeah. I can't see him even... turning up. To be quite honest. Yeah, he, I don't think he wants to. Yeah, I think he, he a big big no on the invite. 
Yeah, I think when he went to Singapore, did he not fly on um, China Eastern or something like that? He were on a 747, weren't he? One of big mm-hmm. Chinese carriers when he went to Singapore. So maybe he'd, he'd I don't know, use one of the Chinese. Yeah. Um, if he can, which he, he's, he's not going to turn up anyway. Let's be honest. So yeah. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not even worth worth carrying on with, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, they've got they've certainly got some quirky planes in North Korea, haven't they? Yes. Um, um, are we going to do the, the shout-outs now, then? Uh, we will do shortly. There's just one more comment in there from Rob Brown. Yeah, I'm just going to Rob Brown playing spotting again. Um, just today at PIK, Canadian CF-18s headed for NATO Air Police in Romania. Yes, uh, oh. PIK obviously being Presswick. Yeah, 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 yeah. I sometimes keep my eye on Presswick because we do get a little bit of um, traffic from Presswick when, when they're flying light in a suddenly direction, flying over where we live, but um, I, I, I didn't see anything like that. But you do see some um, nice nice stuff going into Presswick, you really do. Mm. You get the massive stuff, really, don't you, going you there did, sometimes? Yeah, I saw the, it was when the anti off... Um, 225 flew from Presswick. He flew right over the top of my house. I've got a photograph of it somewhere, and uh, at 15,000 feet, that which were a nice, uh, that were nice to see. And it looked like it were, um, it, it looked like it were going so slow as he flew over as well. And you, uh, you nice. know, it, it, absolutely fan- fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Very, very good. I've put a poll in the chat just while we uh, start to wrap things up to whether um, you've enjoyed the show this evening. Um, so far, everyone's loved it, so that's a good good sign. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, uh, that will be ended by the end of the show. So if you are um, watching and haven't voted yet, put a little vote in there as well. Let us know if you enjoyed the show or not. Um, but that's going to do it for this episode. Um, it's been thoroughly enjoyable. has flown by, um, as it normally does. Um, and now we're going to go into the section of the podcast where we start to do some shout outs um, and say hello or, or whatever to anybody and everyone that we want to, whether it's loved ones or just anyone in general. Um, Jack, we're going to go with you and put you on the spot and we're going to give you the opportunity to shout out as many people as you like. OK, thank you very much. I'm going to be after going to be quick because I'm. Um... My phone's about to die, so I'm going to give a shout out to A320 Study Guy. They set me up mad, crazy, massive A320 model. Uh, it's like the size of an A3 piece of paper, I would say. Um, also, massive thanks to Wow Air for sending me a A321 model, and I'd also like to give a shout out up to. Um, Panzer Jaeger, whatever his name is, in the chat. He's my he's my best mate. So, yep, there's a shout out to him. Go follow him on all of his socials and what have you. Um, uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to Aeros. You know, brilliant flight school. Definitely recommend. And Bristol and Wessex flying school. You need a, a flying club in the southwest. Definitely recommend. Fantastic. Um, who should we go with next? Um, go on, we'll go with Steve. Let's have a let's have your shout outs. All right. Um, first of all, to to Jack, thank you for coming on. It was enjoyable. It was good to hear about other places and other experiences. Um, thank you very much. Um, I'll give a shout out to Plane Supporter Travel Five. I will definitely sort you out that trip to uh, Bristol at some point. I'll I'll get in touch with you. And uh, Tom and Ian, not just for the show, but just for like the laughs and that we have playing online during the week. It, <laughs> it's it's, uh, it's good fun. So yeah, thank you both very much for that. Any more shout outs you want to give? I know you've been mentioning one during the week. Oh, just a, a good mate of mine who uh, who had an accident. He fell down the stairs and he broke his arm, but I think he's 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 on the mend now. Get well soon. Yeah, 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 I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, pass, I'll pass that on to you. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> uh, I've also yeah. got another shout out I'd like to give uh, to um, my good friend of mine who's a senior first officer at EasyJet called Tom. 
just I'm gonna after this probably gonna play some Fortnite with him. <laughs> and um, my final shout out to is is to Tom at the Departure Lounge, Ian and Steve. Thank you very much for having me on the podcast today. It's been very good. Thanks. Our pleasure. Oh, you're yeah, welcome. Absolutely. Thank, thanks, Jack. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, Ian, your turn. No, we've done you. We? Um, yeah, I'd like to. Um, no, we haven't done. You. Yeah, just just shout out to yourself, Tom and um, Steve, for uh, letting me be part of your podcast again. It's always uh, it's always good fun. I really really enjoy it. Uh, to Jack as well for. Um, joining us tonight and uh, it's, it's been an interesting one about the southwest of england it really has so yeah thanks for that um other people in the chat as well i'm just uh, yeah we've got uh, rob brown rob brown playing spot and cheers chaps um all around all around the uk tonight so yeah just thanks to everybody who's been listening in tonight and uh yeah, it's been it's been a good one it's, it's been interesting enjoyed it mm. Uh, I'll give a few shout outs first of all to the key workers all around the world including the NHS and any health services that uh, you have in your countries um, for the continued hard work that everybody is uh, continuing to put in in this uh, current uh, sort of pandemic crisis whatever you want to call it Um, so a big sort of shout out to you guys Um, big shout out to uh, Jack for having you on it's been a lot of fun talking about the um, very sort of silent subject of the uh, southwest aviation um, industry if you will um so yeah big thank you for for, for coming on oh, thank you very much for having me um big shout out to ian and steve for um again echoing what steve said the laughs and um for yeah being fantastic uh again this evening so big shout out to you too yeah well no thank yeah, you cheers, Tom again sure we'll be having some more laughs afterwards um but yes um and finally my last shout out goes to any suitcase makers in the world um you guys are uh, are fantastic so um yeah suitcase makers we salute you um but yes uh let's talk about next week next week's show we are debating um about all the airlines that we have sadly lost over the last sort of 10 years or so um all the major players um including flyby monarch and thomas cook so we'll be sort of having a quick look into them um and sort of reminiscing on on memories that we have of them as well and sort of finding out why uh why they went up, sort of you know went from our skies um which should be very interesting so hopefully you guys can uh, can can join us for that um yeah everybody loved the show this evening so the poll is now about to end um so if you haven't voted yet get your votes in very very quickly um but yeah all that's left to say is we'll be back again uh next sunday the 5th of september um for obviously next week's show 7 p.m british summer time slash uk time however you want to put it um and um it should, uh, should 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 be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to sort of diving into um, diving into the sort of history of of airlines that have fallen. But um, but yes, so all that's left from us is to say goodbye. So um, we'll start with you, Jack. Do you want to say goodbye to everybody that's still watching? Oh, uh, bye bye, everyone. Thank you very much for listening. It's been it's been a pleasure having me on the show today. Yeah, thank you very much, and cheerio. Fantastic. Uh, Ian? Yep, uh, thanks to everybody for listening tonight, and uh, yep, see you all again next week, and a special thanks to Grey Blue, who, who tuned in and made a couple of comments. Uh, I know she's a bit on the shy side, but she is an <laughs> avid uh, aviation geek as well, so yeah, <laughs> thanks to everybody. Goodbye. And that's because you know her personally, didn't you? <clears throat> yes, yeah, my daughter. Yeah, yeah. you go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in aviation geek she has to be <laughs> she'll be converted it'll be fine and angler <laughs> Steve do you want to say goodbye to everyone yeah uh, goodbye now my good friends and we will see you next week fantastic and all that's left to say from me is uh, hopefully you'll join us next week but um, for now continue to look after yourselves stay safe and uh, enjoy the rest of the bank holiday weekend um, and uh, enjoy your four-day week. 
Have a good one, everyone. Bye-bye.